Temperatures soar. Folks of all ages go down to the river to picnic, chat, throw in a fishing line, dabble a toe, or just dive in the warm river, sending frightened largemouth bass in all different directions. Our great advisor on all things, Benjamin Franklin, advised on the best way to swim on a hot day. During the heats of summer, there is no danger in bathing in rivers which have been thoroughly warmed by the sun. But to throw oneself into cold springs when the body's been heated by exercise in the sun is an imprudence which may prove fatal. Old Ben went on to say that the exercise of swimming is one of the most healthy and agreeable in the world. And he defined it as the act of rowing with arms and legs. Now, old Ben's lesson for how to swim goes like this. He wrote, Walk into the water up to your breast. Then, bend your head forward, keeping your thorax out of the water. Withdraw legs from the bottom, stretch them out, and strike the arms forward in unison with the legs. Corks and bladders are used to assist in keeping the body above water, but you will be no swimmer unless you place confidence in the power of the water to support you. I will therefore advise the acquiring of that confidence in the first place. As a boy, Ben Franklin had a momentous moment on a hot summer's day on a river. Ben Franklin recalled a great moment when he was only five years old at how to swim in the most pleasurable way. He wrote, Being desirous of amusing myself with my kite and enjoying at the same time the pleasure of swimming, I returned to the shore and loosening from a stake the string with the little stick that was fastened to my kite, I went again into the water when I found that lying on my back and holding the string in my hands, I was drawn along the surface of the water by my kite in a very agreeable manner. It's four or five in the afternoon along the Potomac or the Shenandoah in July. A soft, cooling breeze fans through the soupy sauna among the trees along the river. The kids head home, but the old timers followed tradition and stayed along the cooling river at dusk. They would fry over an open fire the eels that one of their number had raked into his boat from a fish pot. And they would sip the brandy, well, maybe not sip, made from peaches, juicy peaches from a nearby orchard that it fermented in a half-buried, half-covered crock pot. Soon there will be an evening filled with the orchestra of nature, and the little boys, too, will go home.